So today's vlog is the traditional sit down chat. I've got the finished objects, I've got the works in progress, I've got um, new acquisitions and I've got updates on HDDC. Just so cute that I decided to put the baby's stuff in it for now. So within here we've got Welcome to HD Designs Crochet, HDDC, the champion of the granny square and nurturer of the new and aspiring crochet designer. I'm Heather, the designer of granny square patterns for my tribe and mentor, providing resources for those yarn creatives just like you, creating income streams from their passion. I went from corporate lawyer being told what to do to full-time self-employed crochet designer doing what pleases my soul and I want all creatives to have the same freedom to have financial stability, opportunities, independence, to have power of choice, to choose how and when you work. Join me on my mission to change the world one crochet pattern at a time. Hey tribe, welcome back to HDDC, HD Design to Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel all about the granny square and crochet designers. So, Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope that wherever you are that you're safe, that you have a crochet or knitting project with you, maybe something else, spinning, cross stitch, whatever, something to keep your hands occupied and maybe even something tasty to snack on. Um, my favourite snack at the moment is oranges. I cannot get enough of oranges. <sighs> So today's vlog is the traditional sit down chat. Um, I pretty much follow the traditional knitting crochet podcast that you'll be used to where I've got the finished objects, I've got the works in progress, I've got um, new acquisitions and I've got updates on HDDC. Um, I said um a lot in the last vlog and had to cut it all out. So I do have a finished object. I have a couple of whips that I'm gonna share with you. I've got some new acquisitions. I had a little bit of a splurge. And also I've got updates. So, cal updates and a few other bits and bobs. So, should we jump into it? So if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. What's good, what's happening? I hope that you're all tickety-boo. Um, I have a finished object that I think I showed you as a whip last time maybe and if you are brand new hi hello and welcome to the tribe you are most welcome here I think I've said welcome about 80 times now hmm. but you are welcome so anyone that's brand new I am currently 29 weeks pregnant that's just over seven months and I'm starting to really pop. <laughs> oh my goodness. This pregnancy has not been easy. And I've got a lot of other vlogs and a lot of information on Instagram all about that. So I'm not going to dive into that today. Other than to say that at the start of the pregnancy... So I found out I was pregnant in October and from like October to January, I basically was unable to do anything. I didn't really crochet, I didn't knit. And then I started to pick bits up in January. And one of the first things I wanted to do was make things for baby. Um, so I've shown you a couple of bits and pieces. I've also already recorded an entire vlog on all of the yarn I've got put aside for baby Taylor. I've also got um, a vlog showing you everything that I had made. I think I recorded these in like February, so I'd made a couple of items then and they're all coming out in different orders. So basically I recorded loads of vlogs when I had a series of good days. Um, a disclaimer, I'm just gonna say, loads of people commented on the last one saying, so good to see you well. Yeah, about that. I um, was given painkillers, which worked really, really well back when I recorded those vlogs in February. And uh, <laughs> I 
ended up missing a dose so that I could go and socialize and not be like out of it and realized how much pain I was in. And then I spent four days in hospital. So I did feel really good, but there was a lot going on. Anyway, so I've got like some baby stuff to show you because I have finished a couple of items since I last sat down. I did a sit down catch up vlog and spoke to you all about what had been happening in January and February of this year. Um, and since then I have finished I finished a onesie and I finished a jacket, but the jacket doesn't have the zip in it yet, so I'm not going to show that at all. No, it's absolutely adorable. I made one of these. This is the Stylecraft 4415 Baby DK jacket, and I made the zipper jacket, but it doesn't have the zipper in it at the moment, so I'm not going to show that. And I also did start another one as well. But one item that I can show you that I'm classing as a finished object is this. In this box, it's got yarn hanging out of it. It's a white company box. Um, it came with a Christmas gift in it and it's just so cute that I decided to put the baby's stuff in it for now. So within here, we've got the finished object I want to share with you is this it is the maple overall and I will put all the details of the designer below um and let me just show you it oh it's so cute so this is knitted top down in rounds no rows um so you start up here and then you work your way down and then you save the stitches for the sleeves and you work your way down and you do each bit there's also some short row shaping in the back so that a nappy can fit in there can you see that um and then it the pattern is absolutely amazing it's really really in depth and it tells you exactly how to create the button band it's the second time i've knitted a button band and i went with these little brown they've got like a, a pearly shine to them i went with these brown buttons um for anyone that doesn't know baby's gender is a surprise and so we've gone really neutral with absolutely everything the yarn that I've used is Double Knit and it is Hobby Crafts Women's Institute Double Knit Yarn in the colourway Honey. And I used about 120 grams and I believe that I went with the 0-3 months with this one. And it's just so cute. The only thing I need to do is I've left a little hole here, which I need to just stitch the button band to other than that i'm really happy with it i did put an additional button hole at the very top and then i didn't put a button on just because the spacing is going to be out so that has annoyed me a little bit i might just put one but when baby's in it you don't have to do them all up do you so what do you think it's so cute I absolutely love it. I really would recommend the pattern. It was really quick to work on. I think the only thing for me is I would have preferred it to be in the round because there's quite a lot of purling when you're doing the return rows. Um, but it was so, so quick to do anyway. Um, I have got a couple of design ideas in mind for onesies that I'd like to try. So I think I would definitely make them in the round. Um, yeah, it's just so cute. So that's the maple overall. And that's the first finished object. It's actually the only finished object that I'm going to show you. Even though I've kind of finished a couple of others. A lot of the stuff I've finished is baby stuff. And I'm going to record another like updated vlog on all of the items I've made so that they're like it's in its own dedicated 
vlog um because there's quite a lot of it really some of it is that i've made like repeats of patterns so yeah that's coming into whips works in progress i have got i often wonder i know like sometimes my dad will watch these and i just wonder if somebody who's not aware of the terminology when i say whips or fo's they're like hmm huh? so yeah whips means works in progress and i've got two that i'm going to share with you today one crochet one knitting when i found out that we were expecting i knew that i wanted to make blankets for them um and i've been told by quite a few mothers that you can never have enough blankets i really want them in all different sizes different weights so you've got some lighter ones for the like cooler months and some heavier ones for when you need something a bit more warm yeah so that's okay because the more blankets i want the more that i can make um and if you've watched my yarn tour vlog which i'll link up here for you i went through all of the yarn that i've set aside to be used um for baby taylor's projects so i wanted yarns that were like safe and easy to wash and things like that um so i went through all of my stash and put all of the yarn that i thought i could use in one dedicated tub so that it was all there which then means that when I want to make something, I just get that tub and I can have a look. Um, and so I knew I wanted to make not only a crochet blanket, but a knitted blanket. I've never knit a blanket before. But one thing I have learned is that baby projects work up really, really quickly. So I've decided to knit a blanket. This is the unblocked swatch for a blanket idea that i've got now let me tell you about the pattern and then i'll tell you about the yarn i wanted to do a striped blanket i actually saw a post on instagram i'll screenshot it and put it on here and the person was making a jumper i think and it had stripes in it and immediately it made me think of this yarn um, which I will talk about in a second. I knew that I wanted to use it up and this would be a good way to use it. Um, and I figured that because it's iron weight, it will work up quite quickly. It'd be nice and warm. Um, and I just wanted a really, really plain and simple pattern. I didn't want anything too fussy. I basically just wanted to be able to knit, 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 knit um, until it was done. But having made the maple overall and not enjoying the return rows as much because of the amount of purling, I decided I wanted to do this in the round and then steak it. So for anyone that's not aware of that term, familiar with that term, steaking basically means that you cut your knitting. So I actually knit this in the round, made it a giant tube, and then I cut up the center it's my first time steaking anything and I'm really glad that I did a little swatch to do it on. So this side is quite neat. Now what I did is I followed the Pearl Soho um, tutorial and I will put it down below. They made a baby blanket, also iron weight, striped, but they alternated every row. So it was like cream navy, cream navy, cream navy. Um, and they've also got a matching cardigan, which is something that I'm really interested in because I wanted to make like matching cardigans or jumpers. Um, but anyway, I read through that because I hadn't steeped before. I've watched a few tutorials, but I haven't done it. And so I decided to make this swatch, which is actually quite big in itself. I might even be able to use it as like a bear pin cloth. Um, and... I decided to do these bits in a contrast, which they did in the tutorial, just so you can really see what you're doing. Um, I thought that it would look cuter than it does in the contrast. I might not do the contrast on the final. I might do this yellow section in the cream. But anyway, what you do is 
I have decided that I wanted to put a border around the entire project in garter stitch. And yes, before you say anything, that means I have to do some purling, some purling as opposed to every second row. So um, I put a garter ridge around the entire thing. And then what I did is I then did a purl stitch and then I did a column of knit stitches. So I did purl, 10 knit stitches, purl, and then into the other border on the other side. Um, and a couple of things I've learned. One is, um, no, let me continue before I confuse myself. So then what you do is once you turn it inside out, when you're finished, you have this row of knit stitches and you basically pick up stitches in that then you knit and purl for a few rows you do stocking it, stocking it stitch for four rows and then once you've done that on both sides and you leave it on the needles you cut down the um center which wasn't actually that scary and then you pick up one of the stitches in the column and you bind it off with the stitches that are live on this bit here. Now, the first one side that I did, I went with the very first stitch, and as you can see, it means that some of it has unraveled. Like, it's secure now, but because I there was five knit stitches after I'd cut on either side, and I went into what would have been the fourth knit stitch, so it becomes the first one on this side but the fourth going from this end it's then meant that it's just a little bit messy so on the next one I actually went in very I think I went in on the second stitch in from the blanket edge um which then meant that it's a lot lot neater as you can see so I'm much happier with that um, the only thing I'm not happy with is because I wanted the border, and again, this isn't blocked, but because I wanted the border, I feel like that's lost a little bit with the steak. So either I do away with the garter border full stop, or I was thinking of maybe just securing that steak back like that so that from the front it would look neat it just means that there's quite a bit of material in the back although that would be if i then wanted to put a fabric backing that would look really nice i don't know so on this side where there's more stitches it's a lot easier to fold it back So it needs a little bit of tweaking because I'm not quite 100% happy with it. Um, not only am I not happy with the steaking just yet or the border, I want to change the sequence of stripes as well. Um, yeah. I want to change the order of the colours that they appear in. Um, I want to take out the navy. And... I'm also thinking of doing another swatch so I can practice the steak, but also so that I can make the colourful stripe in Garter Ridge. I just think that would look really nice and draw in the border a bit better. And then what I think I would do on that swatch is I will actually put the knit column down here. So I will do the body of the blanket and the swatch. And then I'll do the pearl column and then I'll go into the garter ridge back uh, border, sorry, which then means that this knit column that is actually on the end will be here. So then when it comes to steaking, I'll be picking up stitches here. And then when I cut, I will just fold back like that. I'm going to give it a go. I also think that I I think they said to drop down to like quite a small needle. 
and I'm quite a tight knitter which has then meant that that's really quite rigid um, so I'll probably just knit that in the same gauge so it's not as rigid um, and then I actually bound off with a crochet hook and again I dropped down to quite a small hook size to match the needle they suggested and I will do that in the hook uh, needle size that I used for this which was a 4.5 mil um yeah so I'm gonna make a second swatch and see how that goes I'm not as keen on how deep this garter ridge is either um I think that it only needs to be like half of the depth so I think there's like six ridges and I'll probably just do three um other than that I'm happy with it I'm learning a lot doing these things and that's the most important thing. Um, making all of these outfits for Baby Taylor has really taught me quite a lot of skills for um, to add to like my knitting repertoire. I wasn't a huge knitter beforehand and I haven't followed many people's patterns. So to learn all these different skills is really, really useful, especially because I have my own designs in mind. It's then really helping me to figure out how I'd go about construction and it's got me quite excited about designing again which I haven't felt for a little while either so that's really cool um so I've learned steaking I've learned to knit in the round top down for a raglan when I made a baby sweater I have learned um stretchy cast ons and stretchy cast offs um what else I've learned about button placements I've also just played with a lot of different fabric so it's been really really good to do so I think you've seen that enough um I'm gonna give it a little block and I'm gonna start the second swatch as well I want to be happy with the swatch before I start on the blanket because I have definitely learned the hard way in the past with my own projects that sometimes I just want to get onto the making like so so badly and I'll rush in and then like I'll get like two thirds of the way and realise that something's not working out or and ultimately you feel like you've just wasted so much time and don't get me wrong I've enjoyed the knitting I've enjoyed the crochet but I would also like the finished objects afterwards um so I've I have learned to sort of make sure everything works with the swatches before you really dive in when it comes to designing. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to show you the yarns that I've used. So this cream arim comes in 50 gram balls and it's from the pound shop in the UK. You get, it's three for two. And I think I told you this incorrectly last time. It's one pound a ball. So when you pick up three, you spend two pounds for 150 grams of yarn. Um, and that's regardless of the weight. So I got 150 grams of Aran weight yarn for two pound. Um, it's a little bit better value when it's double knit. So when you're spending two pounds on 150 grams of double knit it's a bit more um like you get in a bargain whereas when it comes to that Aaron is a little bit more pricey and probably comparable to some of the other brands out there but I just like that it's so like easy cheap to get hold of I don't mind using it in swatches because it's not a big outlay um I'm not spending a lot doing it and that's all I've got left of a 50 gram ball from this swatch. So I don't know how far it's going to go in the actual blanket, but I'll show you in acquisitions. I got quite a lot of it. Now, controversially, did I say that word right? I have used hand dyed yarn with this yarn. Now, I was gifted lots of yarn by Mr. B Yarn and I've got ooh, six colours 
oh, and I was gifted quite a chunk of it um, because the base that it's on um, is no longer being carried by Bird Street Yarn, as far as I'm aware. So Claire got in touch and said, they have this yarn, could I use it? And I was like, absolutely. And then I was going to design with it and I had a couple of different ideas. And then I thought, I'm not gonna design in a base that you can no longer get hold of. Um, so then I was going to use somebody else's pattern to use it all up. Um, but I just couldn't settle on what to use it on because I've got like 400 grams of this, 200 grams of that, 200 grams of this one, um, 200 of each of these, and then 300 grams of this. And there was actually another color that's a bit more orangier than this, and I got 200 grams of that. So I thought it'd be best if it was combined in a pattern. I just wasn't sure what to do. And then I had the idea of like a blanket for baby. The only thing holding me back was it's hand dyed yarn, and is it a waste to use it on a blanket like especially a child one like taking care of it blah 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 so I was like talking myself out of using it and then it was just sitting there so I decided well I'm just gonna use it it's my child so I'll be taking care of the blanket which means I'm happy to hand wash it and whatnot um it's better that I use it than it's not used up and so I would really really like to see it in a blanket so as I said, it is um, Aran Weight. It's Superwash Blueface Lester. And the colours are, this is Sprout, which is this gorgeous dark green colour. Then the lighter green, which is here, is Asparagus. Um, then this grey, I can't remember what this one's called, and then this one I think is Slate. And then there was this one which is Jasper and that's like really autumnal, fall, uh, fl not flowers, leaves. And then there was this one which is called Ray and it is this gorgeous sunshine yellow. And um, then I've got a lot of this cream. As soon as I saw this cream when I nipped into the shop, I just knew that it would just work so, so well. As you've seen in the swatch, I've striped them in. And um, I should also add that when I do the blanket, Pearl Soho gave like how many inches you should be doing to get a certain size. And then, so when I compare my gauge, I think basically that there might be some more rows of cream between the colours just to spread it out a bit more. Um, I've not decided quite how many repeats that I would like. Do I want quite a lot of repeats of the colours or do I want them really widely spread out? So anyway, um, back to the yarn. I want to change the colours. I added in this navy and that's just a commercial navy. And when you hold them all up, it looks like it, sh it should work. But because it's commercial, it's just like a solid navy, which is also covered in alby hair. It's just a solid colour, whereas the hand dyed are very tonal. And so when I put it in, I just felt like it was too harsh because it doesn't have any, like changing colour to it compared to the other ones. Um, so I'm gonna take the navy out, that's fine. And then I wanted to swap the order so that from the bottom up like this, I know that I want the yellow and the jasper in the middle. And then I was thinking of doing the dark gray with the light green and the darker green with the lighter gray. So like this, bottom up. Um, so in the next swatch, that's the order that I'll be doing them in. Oh, sorry, bump. To see how that works up. Um, 
So I'm gonna do my second swatch and then go from there, see how it works out, see if I can get the border sorted, the stripe sequence, the thickness between the stripes, all of that all need sorting. Um, have another go at steaking and I will do the steak column in bigger needles, uh, bigger hook, swap the positioning of it and also make that in cream. So yeah, completely different. So I'm quite glad that I decided to do such a big swatch because if I had just gone straight in and made the blanket, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be happy with this. If this was the full blanket, I know I'd be taking that out swapping it to cream and then basically I'd be binding it back like so so that on the front it looks neat so the swatch has saved me some disappointment <laughs> so that's the first whip I am basically making a blanket and I've I found the Pearl Soho um tutorial really really useful um so once this is complete i'm probably not going to release it as a pattern because you can just figure it out based off what pearl soho have put out there and it's such a useful pattern and it's free um but i try not to so much focus on designing to settle but just designing for the joy of it um and i know that i've got a couple of other blanket designs in mind so maybe in the future i'll make those patterns that can be sold um but i guess i can always write up like the differences that i made so that it can be downloaded and then if you go and then look at their tutorial and have my notes you can make a similar version so let's move on to the next whip shall we and this one is very dear to my heart i absolutely adore it and it's this beautiful, beautiful blanket. Oh, let's try and give you a full view. Okay. Oh! It's so beautiful. <sighs> so all returning viewers will know that granny squares are my thing. I absolutely love them. And when I started to get back into making, I wanted to make baby focus stuff, but also really, really wanted to make granny squares and my child needs to have a granny square blanket. Like it's my trademark. They just have to have one. Um, I've said this numerous times and I'll say it again, you need to be aware that crochet can get wrapped around baby's fingers and stop the circulation. So you need to supervise them. You need to decide whether you feel that it's safe for children to have. I am making this blanket as more of a, like a, I don't know what the word is, like an heirloom or just, I want baby to grow up with this blanket. I want them to use it when it comes to story time i would, like it's just going to be one of those things that they keep hopefully for a lifetime um and so i've made it huge because i want it to grow with baby obviously this is going to drown a newborn but when baby is fully grown and an adult it still be a decent size um it's gonna be like a lap type throw blanket enough that i'm like five foot five and i could probably snuggle quite comfortably under this so if my child's a bit taller then like it'll cover their lap at least <laughs> um yeah so what i did is when i started to feel a bit better i just started to make a ton of granny squares absolutely loads of them and I quite simply got my tubs of a double knit yarn and pulled out the colours and made all the combinations possible. Um, woven the ends as I went along and put them all in a basket. Here's the basket with the ones that I'm not using just yet. 
Um, I actually made 503 and then when I confirmed the measurement I needed 22 rows by 15 squares so however many that is I'll probably flash it on the screen for you now um and I basically had that amount I think I did let me check I needed 330 squares I just checked and I had more than enough of those. Um, I've also got some other Granny Square projects in mind, which is why I went crazy making loads of them. They will get used up. Um, I'm on my last row. So I've got 13 squares left to add on. And what I want to do is I want to back this with a fluffy blanket so that it is even warmer. Um, and I've shown the fluffy, 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 fluffy. I've shown the fluffy blanket before and it's right up there. So I'm not even gonna disturb my mess to make more mess, but it's basically in this yellow color and it's really soft, it's really fluffy and it's gonna make this something like super, super snuggly. It's gonna be one of those things that when we go away, it's something that they can take with this. So like Brad and I like to do a lot of um, like staining wood, wooden lodges and cabins and like go and do a lot of hiking and things like that so it'd be really really cute when baby is older obviously that we'll go and do like a family hike and then we'll come back and this is a blanket that they can like snuggle under to get warm and we can eat snacks and read books and just chill as a family like that's what i'm imagining so um i've got 13 squares left to add and then I need to figure out how I'm backing it onto the blanket and to be honest I think I've slowed down because I haven't quite figured out the next step in my mind <sighs> I'm joining it with this yarn it is this sparkle double knit yarn it's from the pound shop in the UK again so it's um three for two so you you pay two pounds for 150 grams i just love the sparkle now again baby's gender is a surprise so i've wanted to make it as unisex as possible so i've put every single color that i have in there but i've just tried to make it so it's not like heavily pink or heavily blue or you know heavily gendered it's got a really good mix I absolutely love this. So much so that I want to make me an adult version with an even bigger fluffy blanket behind it. Now I've got this um, progress keeper on here. I want to show you. <laughs> It is a orange gummy bear. This one has glitter in it. Now, throughout this pregnancy, from very early on, all I've wanted is oranges. Um, and our theme is bears, woodland bears for everything baby related. So I had to get these stitch markers when I saw them. And I've just been putting it on my last uh, loop so that I don't undo my progress when it's not being worked on. And I've got another one that's completely orange, no glitter. And then I, I got it in a pack of six. So there's actually quite a few of them. I will link the Etsy shop below if you want to get them. So the last, the last um, squares that I need to add on are ready and waiting. And I might do that after I've recorded this actually. Um, and then, as I said, I've got to attach it onto the blanket and then that'll be yet another finished project. I might, because it is so, so big, I might make a, a, a much smaller one that can be used at baby age. Um, and I might put it together in neutral because as much as I love the black bitter, um, black's not a good color in this household because of our dog who's called Albie. I think I said this in my last vlog. Um, he is like more this colour. 
and so black yarn black anything it just picks up so much of his hair um so the neutral would be better because it wouldn't show up as much of his hair um and i've got loads of these squares so i could probably make like a more manageable baby sized one which could then go over them in like the car in the car seat things like that um because then in my mind they're likely to have mittens on um so they're less likely to get their fingers into mischief so yeah i might do that as well so you've seen my finished projects you've seen a couple of the whips i'm working on and that takes us into hddc updates um there's just one main one really and that is that i am running the hg designs crochet cal you can follow it using the hashtag hgdc cal so it's hgdc cal 2022 and it's running from the 1st of march it's already started until the 1st of may and it's just a really low key simple chill um cal and all you need to do is basically make one of hgdc's patterns and then post about it and that's it the reason i decided to do that is because so many people shopped in baby taylor's sale and i know there's a lot of granny squares being made at the moment so i just thought that'd be a really nice way for us all to see what everyone's working on there's already some finished items in there and i know that they said they're going to make some even more patterns so that's pretty cool so if you want like granny square color inspiration or anything like that then definitely go check out the um hashtag on instagram and i think i mentioned before that i've wanted to put together a guide that talks about how i pick my colors how i make this scrap effect look like i've just thrown it together when actually i haven't um so i've started doing that because these are i've got so many granny squares there ready and waiting i've been putting it together um so what that's another reason why i was thinking of making a smaller blanket and without black as the joining color if i do a lighter joining color it will mean that the tutorial photos are that much easier to see because i also wanted to make a written tutorial for the join as you go method and the continuous join as you go method um because you can seam your granny squares together so either sew them with a needle or slip stitch with a crochet hook or you can do the continuous join as you go method and it saves so much time reduces the amount of ends and it just looks really really nice so i've got the video tutorials but i also wanted to do paper like a written tutorial um because it's really handy when you're working on a pattern to just have everything you need there and what i thought i would do is offer that guide with every single granny square pattern that i sell so that it's just like a free edition so you get your pattern but then also there's this additional bit that you download and it talks about how to pick your colors how to work out like how many squares you need um especially if you're making up your own blanket you could use that as well and then like um tips on weaving in the ends and then ways to put it together so i have started that as well so hopefully things will continue going really well and i'll be able to put that out for you i ordered myself a wireless keyboard and a laptop stand for my mac because um i've definitely found with being bed bound so much i lost a lot of muscle um and my posture's not been great like i'm forever slouching now um and then when it came to my mac i was just really hunched over and i was getting a lot of backache and it was making me feel really really sick so i've been meaning to sort out my desk setup anyway so i've got the um what's that thing called that i've just said i've got the stand for the actual mac and then i ordered what i thought was a rechargeable wireless keyboard and mouse and i actually just ordered the wireless version so it needed batteries in it to be used um 
So then I thought, well, maybe I could get rechargeable batteries, but ugh, I didn't. I just want to be able to plug it in and it charge and it be done. So um, I've sent it back and I've actually ordered the rechargeable version, which is actually cheaper as well. So I don't, yeah. I'm basically waiting for that to arrive. And when it does, I'll be like, yes, with good posture. Um, and hopefully make lots of progress on that and the HDDC workbooks because I'm writing up workbooks for um, finances. So how to go, how to get paid from your small business, whether that is designing patterns or whatever it is. I've listed 10 different income streams that you can create via crochet or knitting. Um, and there's a few bonus ones in there as well. So I think there's more like 14 or 15 different ways um, of producing like an income and supporting your yarn habit via different streams. Then there's also um, how to go from hobby to part-time business or like side hustle, how to go full-time within your small business, like how to manage your finances, how to set your financial goals just so much stuff everything that basically i've taught myself and learned along the way with doing hgdc um because ultimately this pays my bills and the more you look after your money the more it looks after you the more that you make your money work for you the less you have to work so there's really like once you've learned some key principles just for me, everything clicked and that's how I was able to go full time. Um, so I've been writing that one up and also I've drafted like pretty much note form ready to go into the fancy template, um, how to increase your sales. So I quite often I get asked like from new designers um, who have just put a pattern out or maybe designers that want to put patterns out, but they're worried about how they'll get sales. like how to increase their sales so more traffic um selling more items all those things i've covered all of that in great great detail and once i start writing it up i'll talk more about that in an update and then i've also drafted the third um workbook that i want to put out soon and that is for beginner designers and that is it's kind of like a start here guide so everything that you would need to know um to become a designer so there's a little bit on finances but it doesn't go into like the full amount that the finances one uh, workbook does there's a little bit on sales but again if you once you're ready then you'll go on to the sales workbook and really like upgrade your skills on that um so i cover loads of different bits and pieces of how to get started resources to use um things that i've learned because i think just a lot of people just designing can feel so overwhelming um setting up your own business can feel so overwhelming so i've put loads and loads and loads of information in there to help out with that as well and again once i start officially putting it into the fancy um format that i like i will talk more on that one as well so the keyboard mouse and stand are going to make a huge huge difference because i can hopefully get a lot more done before like backache and headache kicks in so that's the updates uh which then just means we need to go into acquisitions and i have got some acquisitions to share with you this podcast is already about 50 minutes long but it's okay i'm sure if you needed to take a break you have done and let me just grab what i want to show you So I have had a little splurge on yarn. Um, I started a whole de-stash mission. mission. <laughs> I started a de-stash challenge last year. And what I want to do is use up a lot of this yarn um, so that I can then get more yarns in that I want to use more of. And so the only yarns that I'm allowed to buy is um, 
like joining yarn so yarns for blankets or maybe for like jumpers where I wanted it like a solid colour um so if I wanted yarn to make all of these into a blanket then that's fine because it means that I can use up yarn that is in stash but to just go and get more random colours of Aran yarn isn't okay because it's just going to ultimately add to my stash and I have organised my stash now so that this second tub that you can see is Aran weight yarn then I've got double knit double knit and a lot of that basically goes into my granny squares so I don't want to use all of that up I want to keep that going um and I'm probably gonna add to that at some point because there's a lot of colors now that I'm short on such as pinks and yellows anyway the next tub is four ply um and I want to completely use all of that up and not really have that in my stash um I'm not that keen on the lighter weight yarns they take longer yeah I just want to get all of that used up a lot of it is like hand dyed mini skeins so I am toying with the idea of making myself a really nice blanket or maybe just making loads of pairs of socks I'm not sure yet um and then the next top that on top is all of baby Taylor's yarn so much yarn for one baby like it's mad if you think that like with 120 grams of double knit you can make an entire onesie <laughs> and i've got must be like a couple of kilo of yarn in there so my plan is to make a load for my baby make a load for baby taylor's cousins and other babies in the family and just get it used up um also i've been making some bigger sizes so it does use a bit more yarn hello albus Hello. Come here. Come here. Hi. Hi. Oh. Albie's woken up from his nap, which means my recording time is almost done. I just need to finish up. No, you gotta wait. I'm busy. He's going to start being gobby now. Look at this. <laughs> what are you doing? What did I say? This is him saying, come on, it's time to go downstairs now. You've got to wait. Sit. Sit. Yes. I need you to wait. I just need five minutes, okay? Five minutes. So last week I had a blood test. I hate blood tests. I've been having them like, Albus, no, be quiet. I've been having blood tests every like five days for like the last two months sometimes twice a week and I don't give blood easily no matter how warm I am how hydrated I am exercise beforehand had a warm shower whatever 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 I just don't give it up easily like they'll hit the vein it'll collapse it's just it's just an ordeal every time and I had to go in and have more bloods done and I was just feeling sorry for myself Alps shh and so I'd like made myself the deal. I also had like two appointments. One was like 20 to nine and then one was at 11 o'clock. And because I still need to swap um, my doctor's surgery from where my parents live to my area, it's only like a 20 minute drive. But then I thought I'm gonna have to drive there to drive back to then within like an hour's time, go back again. So, I decided that I was going to nip into a pound shop. I decided, look at this. Hopefully I'll get five minutes to finish this. I decided I was going to go into a pound shop. There's like a little 
shopping centre near um, the doctor's surgery. So it's got a hobby craft and it's got a pound shop. So I thought I'll just go have a look at some yarn. Um, I wanted some bubble gum because that's another thing that I've been craving throughout this pregnancy. And the pound shop's really good for that. Oh, he's just stuck himself downstairs. Goodness me. And um, I went in because I wanted more of this black sparkle because I only have like 50 grams of it left and I want to make a huge blanket for me um, and a couple of cushions. So I went in and they had loads of it on the shelf. So I bought every single ball that was there. This entire bag, basically. I did count it up and I think there's like a couple of kilo. I can't remember how many balls there are. Um, I think there was about 18 to 22 50 gram balls of it. And I know I said it's not a great color to use, but I really, really want to make myself the giant blanket. And I wanted to make a couple of cushions that are going to go on the sofa downstairs. So I've purchased that. And then I was like, oh, they had white sparkle as well. So I picked up a couple of balls of that to add to the granny square tubs so that I can add that to some granny square blankets. And they also had this burgundy in a double knit. So I picked up a ball of that so I could again put that in the granny square tub to make granny squares and technically I shouldn't be doing that because I shouldn't be adding to my stash but I'd never wanted the intention wasn't to use up all of the um double knit because I've got a lot more granny square things I want to make in the future I really want to use up the Aaron and the four ply and I'd like to clear baby Taylor's tub so that in effect I would just have this big one and this one that's all I want I want all the rest to be used up um so there's some big projects that I need to do to get rid of some of that yarn um in the the second DK tub there is the beginnings of a blanket so should use up a load of it so I have got a couple of colors to add into the granny square tub um, but then also when I was in there, I saw this and this is the Aran that I used to swatch for Baby Taylor's blanket. They've got this um, Aran 50 grams. It's in a, just a cream colour. It's just standard neutral and they also had this double knit. Now I picked up what I thought was loads and loads of the Aran actually turns out I managed to pick up eight balls of the double knit as well which is cream but that's fine because I want to make blankets with this I also want to make matching jumper to the blanket or cardigan and I had the idea of making baby Taylor's cousins some um jumpers as well so that at Christmas they could all have matching um and this is just so cheap and then if they put it in the washing machine or destroy it it doesn't really matter because it was you know um and the double knit actually I was a little bit annoyed I was thinking of swapping it but I think I'm going to use it to um make the onesie designs that I've got in mind so that's all going to be put to good use and hopefully we'll use up some of this dash it's not gonna by no stretch of the imagination am I going to use up all of this yarn in the blanket and the cardigan. Um, but it will use up bits of it. And I've got an idea to make some like colour block jumpers and cardigans to go with it as well. So yeah. Um, basically, I'm not buying any more yarn. I'm not adding to this stash unless it is like a joining colour. Because... I've got so, so much and I want to um, massively decrease this. Like all of this that's going on behind me, I want to change it. Um, I want to get the nice IKEA Kallax unit. I want it to look 
neat and tidy and just not so overwhelming and I want my yarn to be in nice tubs so that I can just get what I want out without having to lift all of these down because they are a little bit heavy and it's a little bit wobbly and I, I just in the future when I've got little ones running around I don't want something that they could potentially pull over so chill on the yarn spending okay so yeah that is everything I wanted to show you that's everything that I have to show you this week so that's everything that um I'm admitting to working on in March 2022 and hopefully when we sit down in April 2022 this blanket will be finished this blanket might be even finished and I might have a matching um jumper to go with it and we'll see what I've done with some of this yarn so yeah thank you so so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed it leave a comment below with what your go-to yarn is so if like me it's like black glitter or cream like what is it that you know that no matter what's in your stash you will use it up comment below with that um hopefully when I go looking at those yarns it won't enable me to go and buy any more because we're done okay we're done right I will see you in the next one take care tribe bye